What's up everyone, Connor with Guns and Stuff. And in front of me I have the M1917 US Rifle and the M1903 US Rifle. Both of these rifles were the main primary battle rifle or fighting rifle of World War I for the United States. When people think of World War I and American rifles, they naturally think of the 1903 Springfield. What a lot of people don't know, the M1917 was also fielded in World War I actually more soldiers would have been armed with the 1917 than the 1903 rifle so that's where i kind of wanted to start this video out at so what i'm going to do today is i'm just pretty much going to have a range day with both of these rifles i'm going to do some timed drills and pretty much get some scores and see how well i can hit with each of these and pretty much what i want to answer is what rifle i think is a better battle rifle there are some major differences between these two guns this is actually a british designed rifle i'm not going to get into the in-depth history and this is not an in-depth review of either of these the brits had the p14 which was being made in the states mid-war i guess britain wanted and correct me if i'm wrong in the comments britain favored the smle so what we did was is we got dragged into the war in 1917 and we didn't have enough m1903 rifles to outfit our troops so we just took that existing tooling that was in the United States and made the P-14 rifle, rechambered it in 30-06 and called it the M-1917, which is this rifle we have here. Like I said, more soldiers were armed with this rifle than the 1903. So we're going to talk about some of the major differences between these rifles, things I like and don't like about each. They're both very awesome rifles and don't take this video as me bashing one or the other because these are pieces of history and I appreciate them and I really enjoy shooting them but I'm just like I said gonna have a range day it's pretty wet out it's raining so it's gonna be pretty fun yeah guys stick around we're gonna do some cool drills with these and we'll see which we which I like better and then I want to hear what you guys like better down in the comments okay so the 1917 is here and the bolt is here 1903 here bolt is here first thing I want to show you so if you look at the bolts this is the 1917 bolt this is the 1903 bolt. You can see they're obviously heavily based off of a Mauser bolt. You can see the locking lugs on both sides are up at the front and they have that long kind of claw extractor there. For the front of the bolt, these are very, very similar. You can see how the 1917 bolt here has, uh, people call it a dog leg and I'll show you what that is good for here in a little bit. So, 1917. This rifle is overall length of 46 and a quarter inches. So. This is a big, long rifle. When I first got this, I was very surprised because this was the first one I ever saw and I bought it. So I was very surprised at how just big this thing is. Also, it has an overall weight with this sling on it of 10.4 pounds. So yeah, guys, this is a beast. This is a pretty heavy, stout rifle. The sight radius on this guy is 31.5 inches. I want you to remember that, 31.5. And then the barrel length is 26 inches on this. So if you've never held one of these, if you find one somewhere, pick it up because this thing is pretty big and heavy. So this is the 1903 Springfield. This one happens to be a Mark I. Totally disregard that notch and disregard the Mark I for now. For all intents and purposes, this is a 1903 Springfield. So this rifle is 43 inches long and it weighs 9.4 pounds with this sling. So. It might not seem like a lot, but when you when you pick this rifle up and then go to this one, this feels like so much lighter compared to this. Your sight radius is 21.5 inches. So I just wanna put something in perspective here. Keep, them, keep an eye on those front sights. Let me slide the rifles forward. The rear sight on the Springfield is up here on top of, I guess the chamber and the barrel up here. Whereas the Enfield, the 1917, the rear aperture is on the back of the receiver. So you have a longer sight radius, but I think the main difference that you're gonna take away from this video today and these rifles are how different the sights are. The 1903 Springfield has a very thin front sight. That is great for target precision shooting, and it could be good with, uh, I guess, battle shooting, we'll call it, if you're trained. This rear sight is very, uh, intimidating I guess there's a lot of stuff going on here one thing I'm not really a fan of on the 1903 Springfields is how there's no clicks so this is the windage adjustment this is the elevation if I unscrew this it just moves up and down there's no sort of like one two three clicks moves you up 
You do have hash marks on the rear sight, which you know is a good guide of telling you where you're going to be hitting. But if it was adjustable by click, I think I would like it a little bit more. And also this windage, you can see it's going to move here. That's how you adjust it, and there's no tactile audible clicks. And it has a shorter sight radius. 1917, you have a nice, big, protected front sight. The rear sight, one downfall about this rifle is it is not windage adjustable. It is, but you have to drift the front sight, which I don't think a soldier is gonna be doing in the field. The rear sight here is awesome. Uh, very nice uh, rear sight, something like, if you think of a M1 Garand or an M16 or AR-15, uh, something like that. I mean, that rear sight is very reminiscent. If you shoot ARs or M1s or anything like that, you're gonna love these sights. This is a battle sight for 200 yards. Also, this does have a ladder similar to the Springfield, but it goes up and more tactile clicks. Can't really hear it, but there are clicks in there and I can't feel them, but you guys obviously can't through the video. So for a battle rifle, I think the sights on the 1907 dominate the 1903 Springfield. But if you want to be, you know, or you're at a shooting a match or, or, or something and you want to be more precise, this takes the cake. That rear aperture is super small and super fine right there. And that front sight is really skinny. Let's talk about the rear of the actions here. So 1903, your safety is a lever operated like this. Now I can see I want you guys to keep in mind, I am left-handed, so I do things a little bit goofy with bolt guns. But, I mean, your thumb is right here, so if you're in the field, you need to swap it over. You can just, boom, just like that. It's kind of stiff. But for me, being a lefty, I have to move my whole hand. But it's well-placed, and it's pretty easy to grab onto. You do have a magazine cut off here, which now the magazine's off. So you can load five rounds into the magazine and just throw one in the chamber, shoot, Go back, it's not going to pick up the next cartridge from the magazine, and then just throw in another round, boom. You can turn that off so the magazine is now on. And now notice it locks back on the follower because now the rounds are feeding from the magazine. Let's go to the end field. This does not have a magazine cut off, which I myself like. It's less that I have to worry about, me as the user, just another button. So it's nice and simple. The safety is right here. I like this, me being a lefty, because my thumb can go here. I can just pick it up, boom. If you're right-handed, you just kind of have to pop your thumb off the stock there. And this does lock the bolt up, same with the Springfield. And then again, I'm gonna mention the weight. I mean, this rifle, I'll get a picture of both of these. The 1917 is heavy. I mean, this thing is a tank. 1903, it's a little bit lighter, but after holding this for a while, going to this, it feels nice and handy. Now, one thing, me being a lefty, I cannot do this, but the bolt, what you can do is, uh, the Brits had this thing called the Mad Minute where they could shoot their end fields really, really quick. So what you can do is you can have your middle finger on the trigger, work the action, boom. So you're going really, really quick. Um, I'm not gonna be able to showcase that today. I'm, I, I'm just, I can't do it unless I shoot right-handed, which I'm not gonna do. And then, this is a cock on close action, so, once the bolt's open, you can see this piece right here. You're gonna notice it's gonna stay put and there's a lot of spring tension. Notice how the bolt keeps popping back. So when you put a round in the chamber, you really gotta put it forward. I don't think that's gonna be that big of a deal if you're shooting, because you're moving around. You're not gonna be, uh, you know, be a wussy with the bolt anyways. This is cock on open. So now the bolt cocked, see how it opened. Chamber the next round, boom. So as I said earlier, the 1917 is actually a British design. I want you to notice one thing. Notice how, uh, I guess, the belly, how it, it comes down here. So this rifle can actually hold, it can hold five cartridges of 303 because it's rimmed. Now the 30 out 6 is not rimmed, so this magazine can hold six rounds. And if you push down, you can actually load another round into the chamber. So you can have seven rounds ready to go in this rifle, whereas the 1903 only can allow five in the magazine plus one if you want to do it that way. So for all intents and purposes, this can hold five rounds. This can hold six, definitely something to mention if you're talking about a battle rifle. So again, the edge goes to the 1917 there for magazine capacity. It's a high capacity rifle.
Okay guys, so we're out at the 500 yard range and I started with the 1917 Enfield and I think I got 8 out of 10 hits on steel at 500 and that was the first time I've shot that rifle at 500 yards. I was pretty surprised. Um, I put the rear sight at the 500 yard mark and I was hitting the steel. Now I transitioned over to the 1903 and as you see I'm using the ladder sight and it does have hash marks on it. It's at 5. And this rear sight is so fine and the fog down, down range is really not helping me. It's a white target. It was impossible for me to see the target looking through this sight. I think I got one hit out of four, but I just wanted to kind of let you guys know I was up on target getting hits with the 1917 a lot faster than I am with the 1903. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do five or 10 more rounds, flip the sight down and just use the, the battle sight and try to hold high and see what happens. I don't want to waste too much ammo though. But yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know it's uh, with that really fine rear sight, it was it's very hard for me to make out the target. So flip it down and let's try it again. Sarge, just looking through that rear sight. Remember, this was a this was a soldier's rifle in World War One. What are you? What are your initial impressions looking through that rear sight? And granted, we are shooting at 500 yards, but still, you being a marksman that you are, what do you think? I think that if you were in a battle and you were inside 200 yards, you were probably good. 300 uh, iffy, and 500 in the fog is a no-go. Definitely no. It's almost impossible to see that target. So to my surprise, I got six out of 10 hits with the Enfield at 500 and two out of 10 with the Springfield. Now, obviously you can see behind me, the conditions are not ideal. I know if it was a sunny, beautiful day, I'm sure my results would have been a little bit different, but that's kind of why I'm out here doing this is because, you know, in World War I, battlefields of Europe could have looked much like this. On any given day, you don't know. It could be foggy, it could be rainy. You're shooting this in the dark. But with my experience today, at the 500, it was much easier with the Enfield, and I was very surprised because the Springfield has a much finer sight. Um, what I don't like about the Springfield is there's no clicks. Like I said earlier, you just you unscrew it, you kind of have to guess. There are hash marks that uh, designate where you're at, like five, you know, nine, eight, whatever. But I literally popped this up, put it on 500, and I was getting hits out at 500 yards. And you know I don't do multiple takes. This was 10 rounds on each rifle, just first that was the first time I've shot this at 500 I was very surprised so six out of ten with this two out of ten with that and that's just the results I got today so we'll go on to the next drill all right guys so I'm here on the 50 yard range my initial intention was to do this all on the 300 yard range but it is way too foggy out I can barely see the target down at 300 yards and uh, I don't want to waste the ammo 30 out six is pretty expensive to shoot and this is a fairly expensive video so we're gonna make do on the 50. The target is right there, the little pink guy. I have two different drills I'm gonna do and the main things I'm gonna uh, focus on is working the action, kinda get a preference or let you guys know which action I prefer, the 1917 or this one, and also the sights. So the sights are drastically different on these two rifles, but um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the drills. We're gonna get some times and get some scores. One thing I want you guys to keep in mind is I am a lefty and I'm gonna be shooting these rifles left-handed. I will never be able to run a bolt action rifle as fast and effectively as somebody right handed. I just, I just won't. So I'm, I'm going to do the best that I can and uh, try to get some cool results. We're going to go ahead and do some drills at the 50. I do have two shots on that target already. I just wanted to get a hold where I had to hold for these. That's taken care of. So let's go ahead and do the drill. All right. So this drill requires six rounds. I have three in the rifle. I have a stripper clip that's loaded up all the way. 
but I'm just gonna put the whole thing in and then clear it when I'm done. So on the buzzer, I'm gonna go up and just put six shots on the target in a timely manner. And then we're gonna go ahead and get a score, switch to the 1917 and do the same exact drill. I might even do it twice just to kind of get an average. But um, I think that's it if I didn't miss anything. Also, I know that I'm not wearing iPro. Today is just really weird. I put them on, they fog up almost immediately. This range does not require to wear, you have to wear eye pro anyways, so I'm not technically breaking the rules, but I highly suggest you wear eye protection. So let's go ahead and load it up and uh, we'll see how this goes. It might be a little rough. Was weird. I just got a couple clicks and no bangs, huh? All right, let's uh, stand by. Okay, so the rifle's clear. As you guys just saw, I'm having some issues with my 1903, which is really strange. It only happens on a live round, but when I cycle the action, it's like 50-50. Sometimes it's cocked, open it, load it, and it only is when I fire a live round, and sometimes it's forward. So I'll show you in this video here. See how it just closed? There's a live round, nothing. I have to pull this back to cock it. Why is that? Try it again. Now it's gonna go bang. There, it did it again. So to cock it. Yeah, um, I'm gonna keep going with my 1917 versus 1903, but I mean, this gun is out of commission. This is not working properly. Um, and I know that might not seem fair, but it is what it is. I'm out here. Something is obviously wrong with this. So I was already kind of leaning more towards the 1917, but I'm going to go ahead and do these drills with the 1917 and just call it a quits with the 1903 because it is not working properly. So on with the test. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and attempt to do the drill I just tried with the 1903. That is now not in working order, I guess. Whatever. So uh, on the buzzer, three shots, reload, three shots, get a time and score. See how it goes. kind of sloppy but uh let's check it out all right so here's the target i'm going to kind of walk you through what happened so these were two misses of those six and then the other four are circled right there so that equals 34 points out of 60 total with 25 seconds so that was pretty bad so remember it's those two minus this one get him out of here and then those four so I'm going to go ahead and try that drill again. That felt better, but let's go see the results. Okay, so the second group is much, much better than the first. It's all inside of this right here. So you have those two, 
three, four, five, and six. All in, within the eight ring. So second take was 53 out of 60 with 23 seconds. So significantly better than that. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one more time with the uh, 1917. Felt good. Let's go see if the results are good. So this is more like it. I like this. So 30 points, let's call that 1848. Plus eight is 56. At 20 seconds. 56 at 20, I will gladly take that. So this is pretty much a 1917 video at this point. Kind of a bummer my Springfield's out, but we get into a gunsmith shortly and see what's up. So uh, next drill what we're going to do is we're going to be moving. So running, um, I'm going to have eight, take eight shots. And as you guys can see, there's mud and dirt. So I'm going to be laying down in the muck. But I'm going to take three shots from one spot, reload, move over to the other, take three shots, run back, take two shots. And we're going to do the same thing. We got time and score. And we will uh, see how it goes in 1917 for the win. Oh boy, it's gonna be fun to clean when I get home. All right guys, so uh, yeah, pretty dirty, but I'm having fun. So all the shots that are not circled are what I just got. So that was 72 points out of 80 at 52.9 seconds. I will gladly take that, but uh, let's do it again. I'm having fun. Well guys, I'll be the first to say it. This gun has won over my heart. Well, I'm having fun. So I know without a doubt that second run was not nearly as good as the first, but here's our shot. So if I can balance one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five in the eight ring. 
Five times eight is 40. You got two in the nine ring, so that's 18, that's 58. Plus nine is 67, right? I think I can count right. So 67 in my time. 58.9. So what did I say? 67 out of 80 at 58.9. Take Okay, so the last run of the day, 62 out of 80 with 52 seconds. I know I pulled that shot, so it does not count. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See him? One, two, three, four, five, six, and then uh, seven. There's one right there. All right guys, so wrapping up the range day here with the 1903 and the 1917. As you guys saw, the 1903 bit the dust. I'm not sure what happened with it. I'm gonna get it checked out by a gunsmith. There will be a part two to this video. I'm just gonna do the same drills I did with this with the 1903 and get scores and times, but kind of a bummer. It's out of service, not sure what the issue is. So let's talk about the 500 because that's where both of the rifles went head to head. I was surprised I didn't get more hits with the 1903 just because I thought the skinnier front sight, smaller rear sight, it would make precision shooting a little bit better. Now I know there's a lot of variables such as myself and the weather, it was super foggy. So um, for sights, definitely gonna have to go with the 1903. I flipped it up, put it on 500, and I was smacking the target within two or three rounds. And I had, I, honest to God, I've never shot this rifle at 500 yards until today. So sights are there, this is a little bit more heft but uh, in the dirt, as you saw, the action ran smooth, no issues. Considering the 1903 is on the table, out of service, and granted these are 100-year-old rifles, you gotta keep that in mind. I would absolutely take the 1917 over the 1903. That's just me. I like the sights better. It's a little bit faster, I feel like, with the limited shooting I did with that. Uh, the cock on close doesn't really bother me that much when you're running it quick. Didn't really seem to phase me. You know, a little bit extra weight, whatever. But uh, yeah, guys, this rifle ran like a ran great today. So 1917 wins this video. Again, it's kind of unfair because that one's on the table, out of service. But part two is coming. Thank you guys for sticking around. Hope you enjoyed the video.